surprise. Wouldn't your wife or girlfriend love it if you treated her to the very best this Christmas? Now you can with the world's softest pajamas by Pajamagram. Created by a team of pajama experts, the world's softest PJs are lighter than a cloud, softer than a bunny, like cashmere, only better. She'll love how heavenly they feel. Includes free gift packaging and Christmas delivery is guaranteed. So visit pajamagram.com or call 1-800-GIVE-PJs. Welcome to the Right Time Podcast. The Right Time with Bomani Jones. We got a big week of NFL action coming up this weekend. I feel like the NFL is really just playing that game that the NBA plays, where they backload the whole schedule until they got the whole, you know, calendar to themselves. Except for the fact the NFL always has a calendar to themselves. In effect, they weren't, I don't know if they was backloading stuff as much as they didn't have nothing good to give us. Anyway, uh, we got Steelers Patriots. This weekend, as we described this a little earlier this week, I think Shannon described it best, where he said this is the game that should be a rivalry, but really isn't a rivalry because one team wins all the time. So it, I guess that means it's like uh Michigan, Ohio State, except with all the history, if that makes any sense to you. Like, yeah, 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 it's a rivalry. We all into it, but it feels like all these times you know who is ultimately going to win. But – the Patriots are coming off that loss to the Dolphins. Uh, we had Aaron Schatz football outsiders on early this week. He referred to this as like the annual game that the Patriots put in that isn't so good. Shannon, I did have somebody say, though, that they noticed the big problem is Tom Brady always has his worst game of the year during the fantasy playoffs, which I would take as a personal betrayal if I were them. And you mean to tell me that you don't think Tom Brady knows that? I'm sure Tom Brady is well aware that he has his struggles during the fantasy playoffs. All I'm saying is this. We could talk about Tom Brady being the greatest of all time, but if he can't come through in the playoffs when it counts, baby, then what are we doing? Right? If he, if he, if he doesn't have it in crunch time, then is he really as good as y'all say? Oh, you're talking about those play? Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Fan- yeah. The fantasy playoffs. The ones that count. That's what I mean. If he can't get it done in the playoffs, I don't see how you can say that the man is truly the man. Uh, but anyway, here is Tom Brady. He's talking about how uh, he and his team are prepared for the Steelers' defense. I think at this point in the year, it's not like you're going to go reinvent your whole defense, you know, in week 15. I mean, they're ranked pretty high. They do a lot of things well. I'm sure they're going to want to continue to do those things well. You know, they rush good. They're tight in coverage. You know, they mix their schemes in zone and man and blitzes and you know they do it on all three downs and they don't make it easy on you so now for us it's just being on alert and you know we're gonna try to go out and you know play the way we play too and that's what makes for a good a good game they've had a lot of good teams over the years these are always pretty big matchups and this is this is a big one for both of us gotta say i'm not sure anyone has ever made saying nothing sound like something quite in that way i thought we might get some level of insight about this he's like nah baby they got a football team we got a football team we gonna play a football game it was very belichickian yeah exactly see the thing is the difference between brady and belichick on that stuff is belichick has no concern with being charming tom brady got books and supplements of sweat water to sell us does he sell the sweat water or does he just keep the sweat water for himself I guess I need to look that up in the story. No, no, no. I remember that story with Tom Brady talking about he wakes up and he drinks some salty water that replaces all the nutrients that he had lost when he is, when he, when he was asleep. And I couldn't tell whether he buys the sweat water or he just, or, or he can buy the sweat water from him. Also, is there any possibility that he's found a way to take his own actual sweat and then have that made into the sweat water? Cause I feel like you can't drink sweat water based on somebody else's sweat. You might mess around and drink too much sweat at the wrong person. You know, like, like, you know, that sweaty person in your life, right? Like, I feel like that person need a different formula of sweat water than somebody that's a little bit less sweaty. As Travis said here in the control room, essentially it's Michael's secret stuff from Space Jam. Yeah, that sounds about right. Now it's got me sitting here thinking about who the sweatiest person is that I know, right? Because the thing about the sweaty person that you know is that person doesn't necessarily smell bad. He just smells like sweat. And actually, I do know who the sweatiest person is that I know. Go ahead and say it. Is it Dale Levitard? It is Dale Levitard. Yeah, you are right. Like I, I really was actually throwing it out there and trying to figure out who the person was. No, I don't think I've ever seen anybody sweat as much as when me and Dan were interviewing Katarina Vitt on Highly Questionable, and she started like for real flirting with him right there, and all of a sudden it was like a waterfall. And I'm just over there like, oh boy, oh boy, and she kind of did the same thing to me, and I was like, straight face, straight face, you ain't gonna do me like you did, Dan. Dan ain't know what to do. Anyway, this here football game. Rob Gronkowski comes back. Shannon, you see Rob Gronkowski walked out to the press conference because people kept asking him about his suspension? 
What did he think people were going to ask him about? Dude, you got suspended for a game. It's your first game back. People going to ask you about the suspension. Yeah, he got some audacity, I would think, to feel like he doesn't have to answer those questions about that suspension. Nah, bro, you kind of have to do that. I mean, you actually got off kind of easy. You need to be glad anybody's inviting you to come talk to people in the first place. Like, that's the way that I see it. But yeah, either way, we got Patriots, we got Steelers. This is, this is, the NFL needs us to be on board with that one. But the thing with the league, um, I think something weird happens when the teams on the West Coast actually turn out to be good. Shannon, this game is against, what is it, the Rams and the Seahawks are playing? And they're playing at the same time? Thanks to the damn Giants and Jets, I very rarely ever get a, like a nice, a nice national broadcast game where I'm like, I'm just going to turn on a regular channel and watch the game that I want to see. It doesn't work out that way. Now I got to worry about these two games that are actually good going on at the same time. And as I've told you guys before, there's this real thing about New York. They don't tell you this when you move here, but it's, it's, it's really a problem. It's really a holdup, which is they put the Giants and the Jets on TV every weekend. Did y'all know that? Every weekend, they put them on TV. Yeah. They, I know, right? I feel like that's ridiculous. That is preposterous. Shannon, your Giants are playing against, oh, they're playing the Eagles. It's a rivalry game. Are you actually going to watch them? Or, are you, or have you given up that narcotic like I would recommend that you do? I'd imagine with the uh, whole Nick Foles starting thing that uh, it's a lot of interest in this game. And whether you know or not what? certain defensive players for the New York Giants are going to be <laughs> playing. Who's that going to be playing? I don't know. Eli Apple. Let's see if he plays this week. Oh, that's right. Or he could be out there tweeting or playing. One of the two. No, you're a little salty about this. Just saying. Things happen. Just you seem a little salty about Eli. Just stating I, I, facts. That you were okay with him. Anybody suspended this week? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Okay, so everybody seems to be invested. You, uh, Eli going to be the quarterback? It's his team. He's, it's, it's his team. He's back. He was named the starter for some reason or another. So Eli, <laughs> Eli's the guy. Shannon, you can you can get off the narcotic. It's okay. It's okay. You don't, you don't, you don't even be watching them no more. Like, we try to talk to you about the game while the game is going on. You don't even want to talk to us about them. You keep calling me, man. I try. I, they just keep calling me. No, but we try to holler at you about the games. You don't really want to participate. I feel like you have already quit on the Giants. In fact, let's put that up on the poll right now. Should Shannon quit the Giants? Yes, no, or he already did. Let's find out which one it is. Like, I don't even hear the pain in your voice anymore. I'll never hear pain in your voice like that time Michael Vick and Deshaun Jackson put that comeback on y'all boys. It's like I feel like the energy and the passion ain't there for you no more. You remember that? Just like, I keep sure. bringing up old stuff, bro. Just making sure. Just Why I got to keep bringing up old stuff? Just making sure. Every day I where we I, were past that. <laughs> every day where I got the voice from where I do that, well, one time uh, one of my whole boys had been hanging out with my ex-girlfriend who I didn't really feel like talking about or anything at that time. And I go to the house and I see some picture that's on the table with a bunch of people and she's in the picture. And so I act like I don't see it. And then my boy is like, hey, you see that right there? There go your ex. You remember her? I'm like, bruh, she dumped me like two weeks ago. I remember her very well. <laughs> remember that? Why would you ask me that? I, like, why would that be? Why would that be? So, yeah, that's how, that's how I had with you about that time that Deshaun Jackson walked across the end zone when the punt didn't go out of bounds. Tom Coughlin told him to kick it out of bounds. He told he Matt Dodge to kick it out of bounds. He went on the field and told Matt Dodge to kick it out of bounds, and he still kicked it to Deshaun Jackson. He sure did. And Deshaun Jackson walked across the, the, the goal line slow, too. Slow. Hey, by the way, uh, here's one for you. Have you heard this, Shannon? People talk about Ben Roethlisberger is perhaps the MVP. That that does actually bring up an interesting question in, in regards to the MVP race because prior to Carson Wentz's injury, there was talk about Wentz. Um, some have talked about Brady. I've started to hear a little bit about Roethlisberger and another Pittsburgh steal of what? Antonio Brown is starting to, to garner some uh, talks here. Dude, did you realize there have only been three wide receivers ever to get a vote for MVP? Like, just to get a vote for MVP. Randy Moss, Stunner Sharp, and Jerry Rice. Jerry Rice had a season where he scored 22 touchdowns in 12 games and did not win the MVP. So we talk about if Antonio Brown going to get the MVP with 2,000 yards. No, sir. It's going to take more than that. All right, I don't know if this is a chicken or an egg question, but how can a wide receiver, re- wide receiver realistically win an MVP without it going to the quarterback? Playing free safety also, like on passing downs. Going out there and playing deep middle and getting some interceptions. The same way, the same way it took for a quarter to win the Heisman. You're going to need to play a little bit of wide receiver too. 
and come back out here. Like that's the only explanation I got for what it is. Because Roethlisberger, I has from the games that I've watched the Steelers play, has Roethlisberger actually played well? Like I don't think I would make the argument that he has made po- played poorly, but I certainly would not say that he has played consistently well. Like no, 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 no. I feel like Ben Roethlisberger right now is at best the third best player on that offense. If you want to talk about offensive linemen, that dude to Castro, it is entirely possible that Roethlisberger is fourth. He's still good enough for you to win with him, but I ain't seen anything to indicate an MVP. No, not going that far. The right time with Bomani Jones. All guests join us on the Shell Pencil Performance Line, just like our next guest. Check him out at theundefeated.com, also here at ESPN Radio. His name is Dominique Foxworth. Dominique, did you see Brock Osweiler last night looking like an NFL quarterback? I did. I was I was quite proud actually because I I um I've been ridiculed because Brock is one of the guys that I I think is better than people uh oh, say oh, he is and one? he's been making me look bad for a while. Wait, you're the you're the one guy still on the Brock Osweiler train? I'm not on the Brock Osweiler train. I'm not sure that he needs to be a starting quarterback, but I just remember watching when he was um in in uh, Houston and they weren't setting him up for success and he I guess. Similar to a lot of quarterbacks, he shows glimpses. Because a couple of, I mean, I don't know if you watched how much of the game you watched last night, but a couple of the throws that he made last night are, like, incredible. Not everyone can do that, and that's enough to get you excited. And I feel like when you have a, a body of talent that is uh, above average, which I think Brock is capable of in some in some instances, then you need it's incumbent on the coach to maximize that. And I don't think that uh, Bill O'Brien was doing that last year, so I just didn't like how everybody was getting on him. And I was happy to see him be able to show out last night on uh, a nationally televised game. Now, I'm curious. Did you, when you played for the Broncos, did you ever get to meet John Elway? Because we were just talking last segment about how we could imagine John Elway saying all those same things to himself and tricking himself into bringing Brock Osweiler back. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I, yeah, I'm sure I, I met him a couple times. We didn't spend much time around. He wasn't uh, like a friend of the program at that time. I think he had some beef with some people in the organization back then, but he was always around. Uh, and he was, at that point, he was uh, caking up selling cars in, uh, in Denver. So he wasn't that much into football. I'm just telling you, let him hear that you said that right there. He might make you the new assistant general manager. We are talking to Dominique Foxworth of the undefeated here on the right time. Uh, we got Patriots and Steelers. The Steelers never win this game, or it feels like they never win this game against the Patriots. What do you think that's come down to? Yeah, it's hard to say. I think the, the Patriots, one of the things I've been talking about a lot lately is, um, how do you kind of explain the Patriots sustain success? Because there aren't very many people that, that have been there that long, with the exception of Brady and Belichick. They cycle out coordinators and bring them back sometimes, and they aren't. They certainly aren't super talented because the players that they bring in are not that great on other teams, and then leave and aren't that great elsewhere. So I, I think it comes down to their their flexibility. They they change in the course of they change from season to season and from game to game and they even change from play to play based on what they're seeing better than anybody else in the league and I think that's the difference and I think that's why the the um the Steelers have, and not just the Steelers it's why everyone frankly over the last was it been since 2007 was their first Super Bowl that's why everyone has had trouble with the Patriots because no one else adapts as quickly and effectively as they do. Well, one thing that's interesting is everybody wants to figure out how you can be more like Bill Belichick, but it seems like it's a league full of coaches who are wedded to doing it one way where his thing is, oh, I got all the ways. That's exactly right. And I think that everyone, uh, one of the things that uh, people focus on thinking that they can out, they can, that their general manager might be able to get more talent than somebody else. You can't because of the salary cap. Like the talent's going to be pretty much even across, or they think that they'll be able to be more precise and more uh, effective at running their plays better than some other team. You're not going to. Like they all have limited practice time. Where you can find some advantage, and I think the Patriots have done this time and time again, is that they can be more adaptable than anyone else. And when they have something that's not working from uh, in, in the first quarter, they don't do it again. They do something else and that's sadly there are plenty of coaches who have stuff that doesn't work for a complete season and then come back to next season and say well this is my philosophy I'm going to stick with it all the way to uh, unemployment line <laughs> we are talking to Dominique Foster the, the undefeated here on the right time now if you're you were scheming up against the Steelers who would you be more concerned with stopping Le'Veon Bell or Antonio Brown yeah it's always Le'Veon Bell for me I think the the conversation about Antonio Brown for MVP uh, discussions is fair. He's having a tremendous season, and it doesn't seem like he can be stopped no matter what you want to do because the Ravens were doubling him for a lot of the game, and he went for 211. Uh, 
for the when the uh, when he was being doubled and when he wasn't, he was making plays. So, uh, having said that, I think what is important about stopping Le'Veon Bell is Le'Veon Bell sets up everything. And Le'Veon Bell, when they when they run the ball, he makes their O line not that their O line is bad because they have one of the best ones in the league, but he makes them better than they are by the way that he runs. And Le'Veon Bell opens up the down the field passes by catching uh, three yard checkdowns and turning them into eight yard plays. And the linebackers start to hug up, and that opens them up over the middle for. Uh, deeper plays, and they have to put more people in the box to stop Le'Veon Bell from running, which ends up singling up Antonio Brown on the edge. So uh, I can go on and on for the attributes that Le'Veon Bell has, but I think if you could choose one player to not play in the game, that's the one that you would choose, not Antonio. Now, I could think of a guy that's a stronger rushing and receiving threat as Le'Veon Bell is because Marshall Falk was that guy, but I can't name anybody who gets the ball and just stands there still and then all of a sudden it's like, okay, now the play starts. Do you have anybody with the, as a basic comparison for his style running I, I don't I think the the odd thing is the only parallel that I've seen is that's kind of how quarterbacks run when they have designed QB runs because they're not necessarily interested in getting hit it's like a uh, I've seen uh, Cam Newton used to do that a bunch in college and, and still does it in a league but I don't see anybody else who has that type of patient running the ball the running back because you're always taught hit the hole fast or it's going to close up but Le'Veon will show outside which causes all the defenders to kind of move in that direction and then opens up a lane from the inside and it's like nonverbal communication but the offensive line seems to know that whereas they don't necessarily pick a side when they're blocking they just stay in front of their defenders until Le'Veon moves the defenders to one side and then they say oh okay that's where you want to be and then they they seal them off Le'Veon cuts up and makes a play. All right, last question, Dominique Fosworth of the Undefeated here on The Right Time. Now, you have been uh, critical of the concussion protocol in the NFL. What do you think the biggest flaw with it is? Yeah, I mean, I think it's 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 kind of impossible to to understand what's going on in somebody's brain, and the best way we have to do it is kind of a series of questions. So before the season starts, we do a baseline test. All the players do a baseline kind of cognitive test, which is essentially they ask you a bunch of questions or they ask you to remember certain things and you have to recite them back backwards and these sort of things that are meant to test your cognitive ability. And they set a baseline score for that. And then part of the concussion protocol is then to see how well you reach that baseline again after you've been hit. And it's quite obvious that that's something that not that players want to, but it would be something that's easier to game in the beginning of the season if you're concerned uh, about how you perform later in the season. And it's also just super imprecise. Like asking somebody a series of questions, I'm not sure, lets you know how much at risk their brain is of re-injury. So I, I don't know. I mean, I, I wish that I had a solution for it. There is no solution for it. But I know that the answer to a man convulsing on the bat, on the ground is not to put him back in the game. Uh, of course, I mean, speaking of uh, Tom Savage or Tom Savage play specifically. Yeah, well, right past on the Tom Savage play, I felt I felt like Bill O'Brien got a little bit of a bad rap there because he can only be like if somebody says he can play, then he can play. Like I feel like we have to take it out of the coach's hands completely. Oh yeah, I mean the coaches are biased, so and that's the whole reason why they take it out of the trainer's hands because the team, the trainers are paid by the team. They're biased too. The independent medical or neurological professional is supposed to be the guy that's unbiased to make this decision, but uh, obviously they failed there and they're not seeing the video or something because I don't think you need to be a doctor to know that uh, seizures mean that a guy can't go back on the field. All right, that is Dominique Fosworth. Check him out at theundefeated.com. Also, the morning roast coming back around. Well, man, thanks so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. The Right Time with Bomani Jones. All guests join us on the Shell Penzo Performance Line, just like our next guest. Check him out at the Fantasy Sports Network, AM640 in Toronto. He joins us every week with his NFL picks. His name is Cam Stewart. Cam, big week last week, 5-1 and in the league and 1-0 and in college. Yeah, it was great. Bomani Army came through with the outright win, and uh, that's the NFL, man. You know, some weeks you're on fire. Other weeks, uh, this league, you don't know what to do with it, but let's keep the train rolling. I, this board this week, so many huge favorites, and that's not really my style, but uh, hopefully I got a few winners for everybody out there. All right, let's start with your bronze pick on the games. We've got the Bengals at the Vikings. Vikings are a whopping 10.5-point favorite at home. Which way are you going? Yeah, Bomani, you've known me for a while. <laughs> I'm the dog catcher. I'm the pooch patrol. Dogs with rabies. And you never see me lay 10 and a half, but I have to this week with Minnesota. The problem is 
the Cincinnati Bungles, man. Absolutely. Guys, wouldn't your wife or girlfriend love it if you treated her to the very best this Christmas? Now you can with the world's softest pajamas by Pajamagram. Created by a team of pajama experts, the world's softest PJs are lighter than a cloud, softer than a bunny, like cashmere, only better. She'll love how heavenly they feel. Includes free gift packaging and Christmas delivery is guaranteed. So visit pajamagram.com or call 1-800-GIVE-PJs. Welcome to the Right Time Podcast. The Right Time with Bomani Jones. We got a big week of NFL action coming up this weekend. I feel like the NFL is really just playing that game that the NBA plays, where they backload the whole schedule until they got the whole, you know, calendar to themselves. Except for the fact the NFL always has a calendar to themselves. In effect, they weren't. I don't know if they was backloading stuff as much as they didn't have nothing good to give us. Anyway, uh, we got Steelers Patriots. This weekend, as we described this a little earlier this week, I think Shannon described it best, where he said this is the game that should be a rivalry, but really isn't a rivalry because one team wins all the time. So it, I guess that means it's like uh Michigan, Ohio State, except with all the history, if that makes any sense to you. Like, yeah, 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 it's a rivalry. We all into it, but it feels like all these times you know who is ultimately going to win. But – the Patriots are coming off that loss to the Dolphins. Uh, we had air shots of football outsiders on earlier this week. We referred to this as like the annual game that the Patriots put in that isn't so good. Shout out, I did have somebody say, though, that they noticed the big problem is Tom Brady always has his worst game of the year during the fantasy playoffs, which I would take as a personal betrayal if I were them. And you mean to tell me that you don't think Tom Brady knows that? I'm sure Tom Brady is well aware that he has his struggles during the fantasy playoffs. All I'm saying is this. We could talk about Tom Brady being the greatest of all time, but if he can't come through in the playoffs when it counts, baby, then what are we doing? Right? If he, if he, if he doesn't have it in crunch time, then is he really as good as y'all say? Oh, you're talking about those play? Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Fan- yeah. The fantasy playoffs. The ones that count. That's what I mean. If he can't get it done in the playoffs, I don't see how you can say that the man is truly the man. Uh, but anyway, here is Tom Brady. He's talking about how uh, he and his team are preparing for the Steelers defense. I think at this point in the year, it's not like you're going to go reinvent your whole defense, you know, in week 15. I mean, they're ranked pretty high. They do a lot of things well. I'm sure they're going to want to continue to do those things well. You know, they rush good. They're tight in coverage. You know, they mix their schemes in zone and man and blitzes and you know they do it on all three downs and they don't make it easy on you so now for us it's just being on alert and you know we're gonna try to go out and you know play the way we play too and that's what makes for a good a good game they've had a lot of good teams over the years these are always pretty big matchups and this is this is a big one for both of us gotta say i'm not sure anyone has ever made saying nothing sound like something quite in that way i thought we might get some level of insight about this he was like nah baby they got a football team we got a football team we gonna play a football game it was very belichickian yeah except see the thing is the difference between brady and belichick on that stuff is belichick has no concern with being charming tom brady got books and supplements of sweat water to sell us does he sell the sweat water or does he just keep the sweat water for himself I guess I need to look that up in the story. No, no, no. I remember that story with Tom Brady talking about he wakes up and he drinks some salty water that replaces all the nutrients that he had lost when he is, when he, when he was asleep. And I couldn't tell whether he buys the sweat water or he just, or, or he can buy the sweat water from him. Also, is there any possibility that he's found a way to take his own actual sweat and then have that made into the sweat water? Cause I feel like you can't drink sweat water based on somebody else's sweat. You might mess around and drink too much sweat at the wrong person. You know, like, like you know, that sweaty person in your life, right? Like, I feel like that person need a different formula of sweat water than somebody that's a little bit less sweaty. As Travis said here in the control room, essentially it's Michael's secret stuff from Space Jam. Yeah, that sounds about right. Now it's got me sitting here thinking about who the sweatiest person is that I know, right? Because the thing about the sweaty person that you know is that person doesn't necessarily smell bad. He just smells like sweat. And actually, I do know who the sweatiest person is that I know. Go ahead and say it. Is it Dale Levitard? It is Dale Levitard. Yeah, you are right. Like, I, I really was actually throwing it out there and trying to figure out who the person was. Now, I don't think I've ever seen anybody sweat as much as when me and Dan were interviewing Katarina Vitt on Highly Questionable, and she started, like, for real flirting with him right there, and all of a sudden it was like a waterfall. And I'm just over there like, oh, boy. Oh, boy. And she kind of did the same thing to me, and I was like, straight face. Straight face. You ain't going to do me like you did, Dan. Dan ain't know what to do. Anyway, 
this year football game. Rob Gronkowski comes back. Shannon, you see Rob Gronkowski walked out to press conference because people kept asking him about his suspension? What did he think people were going to ask him about? Dude, you got suspended for a game. It's your first game back. People going to ask you about the suspension. Yeah, he got some audacity, I would think, to feel like he doesn't have to answer those questions about that suspension. Nah, bro, you kind of have to do that. I mean, you actually got off kind of easy. You need to be glad anybody's inviting you to come talk to people in the first place. Like, that's the way that I see it. But yeah, either way, we got Patriots, we got Steelers. This is, this is, the NFL needs us to be on board with that one. But the thing with the league, um, I think something weird happens when the teams on the West Coast actually turn out to be good. Shannon, this game is against, what is it, the Rams and the Seahawks are playing? And they're playing at the same time? Thanks to the damn Giants and Jets, I very rarely ever get a, like a, nas- a nice national broadcast game where I'm like, I'm just going to turn on a regular channel and watch the game that I want to see. It doesn't work out that way. Now I got to worry about these two games that are actually good going on at the same time. And as I have told you guys before, there's this real thing about New York. They don't tell you this when you move here, but it's, it's, it's really a problem. It's really a holdup, which is they put the Giants and the Jets on TV every weekend. Did y'all know that? Every weekend, they put them on TV. Yeah. They, I know, right? I feel like that's ridiculous. That is preposterous. Shannon, your Giants are playing against, oh, they're playing the Eagles. It's a rivalry game. Are you actually going to watch them? Or, are you, or have you given up that narcotic like I would recommend that you do? I'd imagine with the uh, whole Nick Foles starting thing that uh, it's a lot of interest in this game. And whether you know or not what? certain defensive players for the New York Giants are going to be <laughs> playing. Who's not going to be playing? I don't know. Eli Apple. Let's see if he plays this week. Oh, that's right. Or he could be out there tweeting or playing. One of the two. No, you're a little salty about this. Just saying. Things happen. You seem a little salty about Eli. Just stating facts. That you were okay with him. Anybody suspended this week? Uh, Not that I'm aware of. Okay, so everybody seems to be invested. uh, Eli going to be the quarterback? It's his team. It's it's his team. He's back. He was named the starter for some reason or another. So (laughs) Eli's the guy. Shannon, you you can get off the narcotic. It's okay. It's okay. You don't, you don't, you don't even be watching them no more. Like we try to talk to you about the game while the game is going on. You don't even want to talk to us about them. You keep calling me, man. I try. I, they just keep calling me. No, but we try to holler at you about the games. You don't even want to participate. I feel like you have already quit on the Giants. In fact, let's put that up on the poll right now. Should Shannon quit the Giants? Yes, no, or he already did. Let's find out which one it is. Like, I don't even hear the pain in your voice anymore. I'll never hear pain in your voice like that time Michael Vick and Deshaun Jackson put that comeback on y'all boys. It's like I feel like the energy and the passion ain't there for you no more. You remember that? Just like I keep sure. bringing up old stuff, bro. Just make, just make it sure. I keep bringing up old stuff. Just make it sure. Every day I where we I, were past that. <laughs> every day where I got the voice from where I do that, well, one time uh, one of my whole boys – had been hanging out with my ex-girlfriend who I didn't really feel like talking about or anything at that time. And I go to the house and I see some picture that's on the table with a bunch of people and she's in the picture. And so I act like I don't see it. And then my boy is like, hey, you see that right there? There go your ex. You remember her? I'm like, bruh, she dumped me like two weeks ago. I remember her very well. (laughs) Remember that? Why would you ask me that? I like, why would that be? Why would that be? So yeah, that's how, that's how I was you about that time that Deshaun Jackson walked across the end zone when the punt didn't go out of bounds. Tom Coughlin told him to kick it out of bounds. He told he Matt Dodge to kick it out of bounds. He went on the field, mm-hmm. told Matt Dodge to kick it out of bounds, and he still kicked it to Deshaun Jackson. He sure did. And Deshaun Jackson walked across the, the, the goal line slow too. Slow. Hey, by the way, uh, here's one for you. Have you heard this, Shannon? People talk about Ben Roethlisberger is perhaps the MVP. That that does actually bring up an interesting question in, in regards to the MVP race because prior to Carson Wentz's injury, there was talk about Wentz. Um, some have talked about Brady. I've started to hear a little bit about Roethlisberger and another Pittsburgh steal what? Antonio Brown is starting to, to garner some uh, talks here. Dude, did you realize there have only been three wide receivers ever to get a vote for MVP? Like, just to get a vote for MVP. Randy Moss, Throna Sharp, and Jerry Rice. Jerry Rice had a season where he scored 22 touchdowns in 12 games and did not win the MVP. So we talk about if Antonio Brown going to get the MVP with 2,000 yards. No, sir. It's going to take more than that. All right, I don't know if this is a chicken or an egg question, but how can a wide receiver, wide receiver realistically win an MVP without it going to the quarterback? Playing free safety also, like on passing downs. Going out there and playing deep middle 
and getting some interceptions. The same way, the same way it took for a quarter to win the Heisman. You're going to need to play a little bit of wide receiver too and come back out here. Like that's the only explanation I got for what it is. Cause Rock Casino, you know how they be smoking the cigarettes and they put their hands over their mouths and they get to talking. It, it's like the Street Dreams video. You're hot right now. You're hot as a pistol. Yeah, hot as a pistol. Right, like LeBron is really out here. And I guess he, we've seen him do this before. Remember he talked to Wade uh, when they, the Cleveland-Miami game the first time he comes back? Imagine that being your life where whenever you feel like talking to somebody, you feel like you got to cover your mouth. I tell you, this is about Lonzo, though. LeBron told Lonzo not to say a word, right? Like he went over there. there that was not a conversation. That was one man talking to another man. And he, 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 find your zone. Stay effing locked in. The media's going to ask you what I told you right now. Tell them nothing. Not Don't say nothing. That was a clear command. Tell them nothing. It was a test. It was. It was. Abso- it was absolutely a test. He wanted to see if he can trust him with this information. He wants to see whether or not Lonzo was messy. That's right. And let's get that Lonzo sound again to see if he passed the test. What did Lonzo say? I noticed LeBron grabbed you after the game on the court. What did he say to you? He didn't tell me anything. Just said good game and kind of slapped hands. Yeah. That's it? Nothing. Did you make any kind of recruiting pitch to LeBron? Did he bring the game? Did the game to yourself? No, nah, I didn't or? say nothing. Well, LeBron, like, I can't be playing on no team with no messy dudes. Right? Like, if I can't, if I can't trust you to keep it close, ain't no way I'm coming to play for the Lakers. I ain't gonna lie though, if I was Lonzo, I'd have been making a recruiting pitch to LeBron. Except the problem is they kind of have the same job. What you, like, what use is Lonzo if LeBron's on the team? I guess it wouldn't have sell just to be that Lonzo would make uh, Le- LeBron's job easier because he would handle the ball more? Yeah, except what does LeBron need around him? Like what is like what do we know? Like what kind of players does it seem to work best around LeBron? Shooters. What is that one thing that Le- that Alonzo uh, is a little bit awful at doing? That's why with Lonzo, if he was doing a recruiting pitch, he, you see how good Kuzma's out there? He's looking real good, isn't he? Out there on the wing, hitting those shots. You see that? Young, athletic, all the energy in the world. Yep. And if I were you, I'd think about keeping that Jordan Clarkson. He seems to have a little something about him right there. Yeah, there we go. By the way, Shannon, did you know Jordan Clarkson is a Filipino? I did not know that. I learned, I learned that on the Googles. Oh, wow. He's actually done some playing for the Filipino national team. By the way, is the day that you decide to go play for like the other country national team, the day that you, the day that you decide, I ain't never going to be no superstar anyway. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like Al Horford should be on an American Olympic team at some point, but he plays with the Dominican squads. Like, you have to make that decision early. Like, am I ever? You, you can't be like Alex Rodriguez, who was like, I'll try to play for everybody in the World Baseball Classic if I can. You know, it's ain't like it's the Olympics or nothing. 888-729-3776. That is our telephone number. By the way, just reminding you guys to get your stories in here about when you quit playing football as we are running out of time, uh, to do that. I guess I run this by you guys right now for those who don't know. Um, the right time is going to run through the 26th. And after that, um, still be an ESPN radio property, but I'm going to be moving the show to a podcast rather than doing a five day a week radio show. Now the, the show, the right time will run here again till December 26th. My last day here though will be Tuesday because it's the end of the year. You got to use that vacay while that vacay is there to be used. Yes. I know some of you are thinking I have all the vacation time in the world. And the answer is, Hey man, negotiations anyway. Um, but. Through Tuesday, I will be here. I have certainly enjoyed the time. We'll do all the weepy stuff as we actually get to the point where you have to be weepy. But I say all that to say, if you do want to tell your story about why you quit playing football, your time is uh running out. So go ahead and get that in. I'm also going to say this again because I've been looking around at what the sporting landscape is, and I would really appreciate it if you guys would call in with your funny stories. It would be helpful to me. It would be helpful to the audience. Like sometimes I'm willing to come before you and acknowledge that in spite of what one might perceive as my brilliance, that brilliance can only go so far. And sometimes we need your brilliance to get us through. Help your boy out. Help your boy out. Although, Shannon, I feel like this is like the virtual equivalent of me working in a store and asking a tall person to read something for me off a tall, off a high shelf. Like I can't find a ladder. That sounds like uh, you've experienced that before being the uh, big man, huh? That is correct. Hey man, you you do me a favor, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look up there and see if you got if there's an extra large. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. That stack, that stack over there to the right. Okay, cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. We go ahead and uh do that. Chad, how much would you have loved it though if LeBron had come up to Lonzo and been like, "Tell your daddy keep his name out, keep my name out of his mouth." See, that's my whole thing with with all of this. I think if the two would have just spoke after the game. We wouldn't have nearly the the uh, speculation that we did afterwards. Granted, we were able to find out what exactly uh, 
LeBron told Lonzo. But if they would just had a normal conversation, it wouldn't be nearly as much speculation. As a matter of fact, I'm kind of disappointed that we got the actual audio. It would have yes. been better if we would have just speculated on what he actually told him. Yeah, I hate nothing more than when somebody tells us what the story is. Imagining is often a lot more fun. Like there was a story, there was a picture that was bouncing around the internet. You see that a couple, uh, a couple weeks ago? It was this older black man and his wife. And like his wife was gorgeous. They looked to be like supremely in love. But there was one picture where she leaned up on him and that dude was looking at the camera like, what'd you say? And I was like, yo, I need to find out what it is that the photographer had to say right now. Cause that looked like a man that's been ready to fight to prove his love for 50 years. And people are like, his children took the picture. I'm like, damn it. It was better when I thought it was just some fresh mouth punk. So I went ahead and just kept on riding it out. Like it was the lie because that truth did not do anything to entertain me. The right time with Bomani Jones. Let's hit the phone. So DJ Mike hit man. Mike, what's going on? Hey, Bo, what's going on? Hey, Bo. I was listening to you. Did you say you had had a girlfriend for two weeks and she was dating your friend? Wait, what? Did you say something about you had a a, a, a friend that was dating your your ex girlfriend? Nah, I don't even remember what I was saying, but I don't think it was that. N- oh, I'm gonna say he ain't your no, no, friend, no, no, no. He went. Oh, I remember that. He wasn't dating my ex girlfriend, but he knew her. And wild up somewhere, and there was some picture that was taken, and then he got to talk about you want to see this. I'm like, no, I don't actually. Oh, give me his name. I got to talk to him. Bo, Shannon Steves was over when the Cowboys met him. He knew in the first game it was over. He didn't have to look at no more games. He knew it was over. Hey, Shannon, when you hung up the phone, when I hung up the phone yesterday, I wanted to ask you this. What's up? You said Boston You said Boston ain't going to beat Cleveland. You already owe me a steak. Uh-huh. Let's put two steaks on that. I got all 32 teeth, and I can eat. <laughs> Let's go for both and Celtic. And I got I guarantee that Celtic eliminates the uh, the old Cleveland. What you got to bet on that? Your uh, basketball team is over, your football wow. team over, root for somebody else. Wow. Damn. I like that though. I like that. I'll I'll take that. I'll take that. So you're saying Boston will make it to the NBA finals and I'll say it'll be Cleveland. I like that. Yeah. Fine. I'll, and I'll, I'll take say that. Boston win the six. All right, cool. So Boston wins in six. So if Boston gets to the NBA finals, Right, you'll have to treat me to a steak. But if Cleveland gets to NBA Finals, you'll have to treat me to a steak. I like those odds. I, 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 that's a good one. I'm gonna treat you to a steak and a milk and olive if you win. But if I win, I want the best milk you got in New York. I don't want that two percent stuff. I want the best. <laughs> I'll find Whole somebody. Milk. We're good. That's a, that's a deal. That's good to me, Mike. Okay, and and one more thing, Shannon. You got the number one pick in the draft. Ladies and gentlemen, NFL pick, the New York Giants select, Sam. All right, there you go. Have a good one. <laughs> all right, Mike. 888 Say Shannon might be picking on you. No, that's all good. He, he has like, he has all the room to talk smack right now. His, uh, his Cowboys are still in playoff contention. They're coming off a win over my Giants. The Boston Celtics, best record in the East right now. I'll give him that. His Alabama Crimson Tide in the Final Four. Mike got it rolling right now. He's all good. I got to give it to him. I, I got nothing. I got a jealous of Mike. Nothing but respect for him right now. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I'm looking at you. Looking at the tight lips. No, I'm, I'm good. I'm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, he's just he's just f- feeling really good right now, and he's probably back in Chicago singing, singing his singing his favorite song. <laughs> I'm gonna let you ma- which marinate, is, uh, which is probably Sweet Georgia Brown. Sweet Georgia Brown. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so check this out, guys. Kyrie got new shoes coming out. The new version of the Kyrie Fours. All right, now these Kyrie Urban shoes are called. They feature. An all-seeing eye. That's what they call the icon. It's behind the tongue. It's a picture of an eye. And that eye is meant to, quote, challenge everyone to seek their own answers beyond the ones that are given to us by books, media, internet, etc. Shannon, Kyrie got air wokes. Oh, if you're very much woke, there is no such thing as distraction. Okay. So he's taking this Kung Fu Kyrie thing all the way into how he makes his money. So he's trying to have some some branded shoes that are all about this new Kung Fu lifestyle that he's on. Didn't he also go vegan, Shannon? Didn't he also do that? Changed up the whole whole thing, his lifestyle, eating habits, the whole nine. Changed up everything. Like, I understand that Kyrie wasn't in college very long. So is he just going back and deciding, I want to do freshman year stuff all the way over again? 
Like that, that's what I feel like all of this is. Shannon. This is a half step away from Kyrie starting to walk around campus wearing a kufi. That's what I was going next. I'm surprised he doesn't have a medallion. Yeah, you know that dude, right? That dude that gets to college and gets all the way woke. He always hanging out at the shrine of the black Madonna, except I don't even know if this is like the particular strain of wokeness that Kyrie has. But this is where I'm on Kyrie. I'm like, come on, bro. What are you talking about? He says to challenge everyone to seek their own answers beyond the ones that are given to us by book, media, internet, etc. Kyrie, I got a question for you. Where are we supposed to seek these answers out from, if not from these places? Like, does Kyrie have some, like, the answer store that he goes to? Has he determined, like, found some oracle or something else? Like, where does he go to get these answers? Because I feel like what happened was Kobe told him one time, quit, quit reading them books and just listen to me. Like, is that why he doesn't need to, he doesn't need all this other stuff? He just talked to Kobe. I figured it out. Kyrie Irving is the new Oswald Bates. That's yes, exactly what it is. Hey, I actually am a little disappointed that Kyrie doesn't use more big words. Like, I feel like he's all the way into the big word program. I wonder what happened. He got in Bolo's face talking that noise. You remember Bolo? End of the Dragon, like, the most fearsome thing I feel like I've ever seen anyone in a movie ever do is if Bolo folded that dude in half and into the Dragon. Like, did Bolo kill, like, three people in 45 seconds, culminating with folding that dude in half, put a crease in his back? Imagine that, right? Just imagine that. This big old dude picks you up and you're like, oh, well, what's the worst that could happen? Wait a minute. He's putting a crease in my spine. That's Kyrie. Stay woke, homie. Stay woke. 888-729-3776. Hit the phone. Talk to Simon in Arizona. Simon, thanks for calling the right time. Hey, what's going on, Bo? Big fan, man. It's my second time calling in. Just, you know, pleasure to listen to you on the radio on the drive home, man. But I just want to talk about my football story. So, you know, I'm graduating eighth grade or promoting eighth grade. And so freshman year, high school, you know, I want to play football, you know, play a lot of Madden at home, you know, play with the with the friends at the park. So I figured I'd give high school football a try. So I go and have weight training. They're going to try to put me uh, with the linemen. And so I walk in and I see this big guy, you know, 315 on the bench, just making that bar bend. And all of a sudden I'm like, man, who's this guy? Oh, that's just Everson. Everson Griffin, who now plays uh, for the Minnesota Vikings. And I'm like, uh, nah, I'm just going to play Madden at home. So just got to call my mom and be like, hey, mom, can you pick me up? She's like, yep. And that was about it. Next thing I know, one of my friends who's a freshman on the scout team got a concussion from trying to tackle Everson because they put him at running back too. So I was like, well, avoided that CTE. So, yep, still playing Madden though. Yeah, yeah, no, you made the right play, Simon. Um, I appreciate it. Yeah, dog, I don't want no parts of that, man. I don't want no parts of that. He's got Everson Griffin. No, nah, bro, I'm good. A lot of these stories, when it's in the middle of the story, when they mention that, yeah, I had to go up against an insert player's name who now currently plays in the NFL. Yes. I don't need to hear the rest of it. I already know where you're going no, with this. Got it. Got it. The Right Time with Bomani Jones. All guests join us on the Shell Pencil Performance Line, just like our next guest covers the NFL for us here at ESPN. His name is Damian Woody. Damian, they tell me you got a story. When you were in high school, you saw somebody who went ahead and quit playing football. Man, let me tell you, Bo. So when I was in high school, man, like our high school team was legit, no joke. Our offensive line was bigger than the Redskins' offensive line in high school. That's how that's how big we were, man. So you know, we had a uh, we had a dude. Uh, from my, one of our rival high schools, man, he <clears throat> he heard all the hype, but he didn't believe it, man. We played in the game, and he man, he came in, and came in on a play, tiptoeing, man. We kicked, dude, we kicked my man out the club so good, man. On on, <laughs> on one play, year fast forward, probably like I think it was like uh, my second year in the league. I came home. And uh, my man, uh, he saw me. We ran to each other at home. He was like, man, dude, y'all country boys are so big, man. When I played y'all, man, you hit me so hard, man, that, man, I end up man, I end up uh, quitting after the game, man, because moms was like, them boys, them country boys too big for you. So he ended up playing basketball and, and let football go. I said, I don't blame him. I'm like, I don't blame you, Pimp, man, because we were out for blood in, in that game, man. So we had a lot of cats on skates when we were in high school. Yeah, I hear retiring people, David. Man, dog, it wasn't a game, bro. Listen, <laughs> listen, my my, my my mama was like, boy, look, you need to go out here and make things happen on this football field and get the scholarship. So that's all I need to hear. So <laughs> I'm tossing cats. I'm tossing cats right and left out the club out there, bro. 
<laughs> We're talking to David Woody here on the right time. I love you say you were tossing about the club. I'm imagining you now in that black shirt just tossing dudes out the club. Oh, man. It, man, man, it wasn't just me. Like, we had – dude, I'm trying to tell you, man, we had like – it was like five or six of us up, you know, up front between our tight ends. And, man, we had like we had like five dudes that played big-time Division One A football, man. And we all country boys, you know, farm, farm uh, fed. And we wasn't playing with any, especially these cats coming from the city. We wasn't playing, man. They come up to the country, man. We was smashing dudes' heads in. So, man, we I'm a, I would imagine we we uh, we made a bunch of dudes quit, man, that year. Because if there's anything country boys love to do is to lay it down on them city boys. We are talking to Tavia Woody here on the right <laughs> time. All right, hey man, we got Steelers and Pats this weekend. First thing, what is your thought on why it seems like the Steelers can never beat them? Well, it would help if they stopped giving Tom Brady the answer to the test on defense. It seems like they play the same the, the same type defense every time they play Tom Brady. And it's just like, dude, what are y'all doing? What are you not, What are you guys doing? I mean, you go out there, you play against play against Tom Brady, playing against the Steelers. They showing him the answers to the test. It seems like every single play you do that to Tom Brady, man, he's going he's going to slice you and slice you and dice you like a surgeon. So. If the Steelers have any chance, particularly on defense, man, number one, you got to get pressure, uh, especially in his face. And number two, man, you got to mix it up, man. You can't keep showing a guy like Tom Brady the same picture every single play. You have no shot if you do. Now, how much do you think the Patriots' performance against the Dolphins had to do with Gronk not playing? Um, that was a – yeah, That I mean, listen, I don't like making it make excuses for Patriots, but Gronk is a big part of the team. Because um, the dude – the dude is unique, man. How many how many tight ends out there can can do the things that Gronk can do? There's not many tight ends out there that can, that can do that. He's just that big of a matchup. But with that being said, sometimes the the, uh, the pass will lay out a clunker like that. But you best believe you never see the pass like lose two in a row. It's like unheard of for them to lose two in a row. So they're gonna be ready to go to play in Pittsburgh. All right, we're talking to Damian Woody of ESPN here on the right time. Now, we also got the Seahawks and the Rams. How do you see the Rams defense doing against Russell Wilson? Man, Russell, that, that's that's going to be the – that's probably going to be the biggest matchup in that in that game because Russell Wilson's like a magician back there. How many times have we talked about, like, the, the Seahawks offensive line and Russell Wilson is scrambling and doing look like Fran Tarkenton back there, and then he ends up heaving up, heaving up some type of ridiculous play that's like, oh, my gosh. Oh, like, how did he do that, man? Because, dude, honestly, like, going coming down the stretch, he's been in the MVP conversation. That's how well he's been playing. So, you know, Aaron Donald and those boys on that Rams defensive line, they're going to have to they're going to have to not only rush the quarterback, but they're going to have to be disciplined because once Russell Wilson breaks out of the pocket, that's when he's at his best. Now, what do you think about the other side of the ball with the Seahawks defense against their Rams offense? Man, listen, if you – the twelfth man up in, in Seattle is that that's gonna be a huge difference because if you're the if you're the Rams, first of all you come into the game, you're trying to knock the bully off the block. You know, that's the the, the, the Seahawks already thinking that you're the little brother in the division. Yeah, you you want you're nine and four, yeah, that's all cute and everything, but you still gotta be able to beat us, beat the you know, the Seahawks. What they have to do offensively, and I'm talking about the Los Angeles Rams, they gotta stay ahead of the chains, man. You can't be third and twelve, third and ten. Because if you're doing that, regardless of the guys that are missing in the Legion of Boom, they still got uh, Michael Bennett and those boys that that are able to get after the quarterback. So if they're behind the chains, boy, Jerry uh, Jerry Goff is gonna have a long day back there. All right, talking to Damian Woody of ESPN here on the right time. What do you think about that Chiefs Chargers matchup? Uh, to me, Bo, that's 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 gonna be a money matchup, man. Because if you think about it. The Chargers were almost left for dead early in the season. I think they were like 0-4 or whatever, and, and the Chiefs came out the gate. Then it kind of flip-flopped. So now you're talking about, you know, the Chargers who's red, kind of red hot coming into this game, and, and the Chiefs look like they found their way a little bit the last game. Um, this one's going to come down to can the Chiefs block those two defensive ends from, from the Chargers? I'm talking about Bosa and Ingram. They're the best pair of rushers in the league right now. If they can't block those boys, man, it, Aaron, not Aaron Rodgers, um, Alex Smith is going to be running for his life back there. Now, have you seen anything that's changed with Phillip Rivers because his play has picked up as the season has gone on? 
Well, you know, like in the, in the, like in the past few years, it seemed like Philip Rivers has just been like heaving up interceptions left and right. You know, that's really been the problem um, with, with the Los Angeles Chargers is Philip Rivers was, was turning the ball over at a high rate. Seems like he's calmed that down. And, they, man, they got some big receivers, Bo. I mean, wide receivers that are like basketball players out there. So, Philip Rivers really trusts his guys. And, and, and Ken Wisenhunt, the offensive coordinator, is, uh, he, he, man, he's, he's drawing them up out there. And, and Philip Rivers is taking advantage of it. All right. That is Damian Woody. Check him out covering the NFL for us here at ESPN. Thanks so much, my man. I appreciate it. Man, no problem, Bo. I'll let you. The Right Time with Bomani Jones. You boys are calling up with you stories about when you decided, nah, I don't want to play football no more. Let's hit the phone and talk to Mike in Ohio. Mike, thanks for calling the right time. Hey, Bamani, thanks for having me on. Yes, sir. Um, so, yeah, I grew up playing soccer in uh, high school. I uh, ended up uh, being a place kicker for uh, a couple of years and then I uh, thought it would be a good idea for me to walk on to uh, Miami, Ohio. And um, did a nice job in the uh, the fall. Didn't ever see the field, but was on the team. So fast forward to spring game next year. I was uh, able to uh, kick for the red and the white the red and white game. I was a starting place kicker for the white team, which is uh, the second team against the red team. I was uh, given number ninety nine, which also happened to be the number for the starting linebacker for the red team. So keep that in the back of your pocket for just a minute. Uh, pre-game, you go out, do a little uh, calisthenics. Kickers go out, you know, make five, six uh, field goals. Feeling pretty good about myself. Running off the field, my uh, girlfriend and parents are in the stands, so I'm not exactly watching where I'm running. And all of a sudden, I get run over by a Mack truck. And as I'm laying down on my back out of the ear hole, as I'm looking up to the, <laughs> the sky, I see red number 99 staring over me. And he says, nice, explicative number, female dog, if you know what I mean, <laughs> and then runs away. And I searched for my mouthpiece and my ear pad and got up, and some of my other walk-on buddies said, oh, don't worry about him. He's, he's kind of a jerk anyway. Uh, after the game, um, next week, practice uh, is over. You, you turn in all your pads and stuff, and you get a meeting with a coach. Coach says, well, Mike, you've done a nice job for us. We'd like you to come back in the fall. I said, you know what, Coach? I think I'm going to go play flag ball for my fraternity. So thanks very much for the time. <laughs> Dang, <laughs> and that was man. it. <laughs> Dang, man. Mike, I appreciate the call. You got to run off a of place kicking? Like, that's the thing. You're like, I'm the kicker. Ain't nothing going to happen to me. And even then, something happens to you. That's a bully move right there, too, by the way. You're calling them anti-bullying associations. It wasn't even in a real game. It, was, right. it wasn't even pra- – it was spring practice. It's teammates. Like, I, I feel like he need to start a GoFundMe after that one. 888 Hit the phone to John in Minnesota. John, thanks for calling the right time. Hey, Paul. Thanks for having me on, man. Say, yes, sir. This is about my my son when he was in uh, fourth grade. So, picture him in fourth grade. He's uh, on the smaller side, but he's really fast. So, the uh, coach says, well, I'm going I'm to make him a wing back. So, we have, you know, they don't have a lot of practices to get him on a week, week's worth of practice before the first game. I'm an assistant, so I'm helping out. So we get to game one, five minutes before the game, literally, and the coach is like, you know, Alex, you're really fast. I'm going to have you run from the running back position for the first two plays of the game. And I'm looking at him, oh, okay, all right. <clears throat> That's what you want to do. It doesn't seem like a great idea since he hasn't practiced any of them. Um, first play, a guy, uh, Amy and Woody size, you know, they put the tape on the helmets of the big guys that can't carry the ball. So that guy busts through the line, hits my son, Ball comes out, we get it back, he gets back up, runs the same play again, he picks him up this time, tosses him to the ground, ball comes out again, I look at my son, he's holding his wrist, I, I look at his eyes and I can tell that we're going to be focusing on baseball and basketball from now on because he's done. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> now, hey, see, that's what your parents are there for, man. I appreciate the call. That peer pressure, man, because sometimes that peer pressure makes you keep on going in spite of the fact that this is bad for your health. Your parents can look at you and be like, it's okay if you want to quit. Okay, I do. That's 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 sufficient daddy in right there. Yes. That he yes. was able to step in, recognize that his son had had enough, and that he personally had enough and stepped in there and called it. I like that. Yeah, and I'm like, yo, please come tell my friends that this is why I'm quitting so they won't think I'm doing it all on my own. 888-729-377. Say something to Bo in Texas. Bo, thanks for calling the right time. Hey, what's going on, Bo, man? Appreciate you taking my call. No problem. I right, for a second, I thought I was calling okay. myself. 
<laughs> nah, my real name is Broderick, man. Everybody call me Pope. Indeed. Uh, well, check it out, man. 2001, I was playing for Middle Tennessee State. And um, I was a walk-on freshman. I was a D-lineman. I um, was about 6'4". At the time, I was about 300. So, um, you know, we go play LSU. And it's their homecoming game. So, you know, they lit. Um, so, you know, it's garbage time. You know, we losing, of course. I get in the game, man. The center, he comes off, and I guess he's doing a combo block because he kind of let me go. So I'm like, cool, I'm going to get in the backfield. I don't know who this dude was, but LSU had this big white boy at fullback, man. This cat came boat and lit me so hard, man. And I was on the ground, and you know how you get the wind knocked out of you? But I felt something else, man. It was something warm on the back of my leg, Bo. Oh, no. I was like, hold on, man. This dude made me short in my pants, Bo. No. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. So I know it's just my, the wind was knocked out of me. But I tell the trainer, say, man, I can't feel my leg. I can't move my leg. I made them get the cart, put me on the thing, man, so I didn't have to stand up so nobody saw that I didn't just doo-doo all over the back of my pants, man. <laughs> so <laughs> they rolled me into the locker room, Bo, and I'm sitting there thinking, like, okay, how serious am I about football? If this is a college player that just did that to me, man, how am I going to make it to the NFL with these cats? <laughs> so, Bo, I politely turned my uniform in, halftime, left the coach a note. I didn't even stay at halftime. This is, I, mean, I left the coach a note. I ain't say nothing else to him. Left him a note, transferred back to Sam Houston in Texas, finished up my school in Texas, didn't play football ever again, man. Hey, man, I appreciate the call, man. Dang, that sounds unfortunate. Thanks for listening to the Right Time Podcast. Please come back Monday for more. And don't forget to listen to The Right Time with Bomani Jones from 4 p.m. to 7 Eastern on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app.